guys, welcome back to Stacy Goes Outside. If you're new here, welcome. I do fishing videos and I upload content at least once a week. So if fishing is your jam, make sure that you hit the subscribe button. Today I am back on Lake Oroville with Rustic Rob and it's mid-May. We are going after some king salmon. The fishing has been a little bit tough this week, but someone caught a 12 pounder this week. So hopefully we can just get some bites. So follow along and let's go fishing. All right guys, first one of the day. If I don't think it's probably a bad. <laughs> There's three bass boats behind us. Oh, it's a bass. Oh, no! Stinking bass on this. We caught a bass before these bass boats caught a bass. <laughs> that's so funny. Well, that's how I do it on this lake with Rob. Going for salmon, catching bass. We gotta get in the bathroom and hold this troll for him. All right, well, that was exciting. So Rob, what are we putting inside these cut plugs today? Uh, I'm using tuna, regular tuna that's packed in oil. And I added a little bit of um, anise and bloody tuna just to sweeten it up a little bit. All right. Yep. Yep. Oh, it doesn't feel like a bass. Pull it out to the side. And a big one? Oh, it feels like it. Okay, if you have a trouble bringing him, just pull it and we'll reel down for a reel. You want to bring him to the center, go ahead. You coming over the top? Yeah, oh, I just want to lose him. Oh, that's a good one. This feels like a good one. Yeah, like oh, geez. Um, yeah, I'm just trying to keep a bend. Oh! Oh, watch him. Oh, come over here. Oh. Come over here. Hold oh. the top, hold the top. Yeah, let me just stay over here. God, it felt like you popped off for a second. Um. Yeah. Oh, oh man, it popped off. Oh. Get hold of it. Of How deep was it? Fifty nine. Oh. Hold a hot tiger. That was a nice fish. Jeez. All right. So what did I do wrong? You lost him. <laughs> yeah. Got it. <laughs> Got it out. Oh. Oh, take it over this side because I'm gonna for this way. I'm afraid to hit anything. Oh, over here? No, the other way. Because I'm. I turning, just don't want to give it any slack. But I'm turning the boat. Oh. oh, I see what you're saying because we're okay. All right, you can hold over. Don't point the rod at him. There you go. Good fighter. Yep. Yep. <laughs> oh! Yeah! Woo! <gasps> nice one. Yeah! Uh, great, guys. I did not lose this one. It's a nice holdover, but it's actually kind of small compared to all the ones we got last weekend. Out of out of the ones we put in the boat, this was probably the smallest one. That's probably a five, five and a half pounder. Nice. Yeah, and as you guys saw, that thing kind of warped me. <laughs> I was worried it was gonna throw the hook, but teamwork. Is that anyone that Brad's cut plug? This is called the Gold Diver Down. Is that a good color for them? It's a it's a funny color. It's either um, really hot or it's really not. Okay. Well. And this time of year, it's been hot the last week or two, and that's the way it was last year. So I've been trying to keep it out there, and it seems to be doing the job. Now I feel a little bit better about got both hooks in him. Oh, okay. So he wasn't going nowhere. Nice. So these holdovers, like river salmon, you want to be sure and bleed them out. So Rob, for people who don't know what the term holdover means, what exactly are you referring uh, when to? When they put the fish in first first year, they are considered one year old. And because they're, they're planting that, them. They, they're they're planting here in Oroville. And okay. then for the first year they're in here, they're maybe 
15, 16, 17 inches long. And then the ones that are left over, they hold over from the year before. Okay. The ones we call hold over, and that's what you get here. How big are the fish that they typically plant here? When they plant them, they're about three inches long in the springtime, but they hold them until the fall to plant them. They'll be about four or five inches long, right. maybe six. So you took one look at this chunky monkey in the water. You knew that was a holdover, oh, right? Yeah. Right. Just looking at your rod, I could tell I was older. Nice. Great. What do we need to do before putting them in the live well? You want to be sure and bleed them out. I reach down the side of here like this and just cut up both sides. And you, you can see they're bleeding pretty quick. So. Why do you want to do that? I want to get the blood out of the meat so it'll have a stronger taste with it. And, uh, We're fishing right next to the dam. We're running how deep today? Right now we're running about 45 to 65 feet. Okay. Uh, this time you're going to go over how you tie your hooks for. Yeah, a lot of people have asked about this, you know, the knots I use and how I get my two hooks so close together and stuff like that. So you take that little rubber band off and you fill that cavity with the uh, tuna and it's perforated at the bottom so that oh, top tuna and the will, bottom. Oh, okay. So both sides so that mm -hmm. scent will reach out while you're fishing. And you just put the rubber band on. Now, if you see Rob's head darting back and forth, it's because we are still we're gonna make sure that we're where we're supposed the to be. Get us, we wind up yeah, the wind kind of picked up. Yeah. So, what pound test are you using? I mean, this is 15 pound test. Right there, right there. Oh. And then I, you run it through here once, and you make a loop. Run it back through here a second time. The snell knot's what we're doing. So you have it through like that, see, twice. Now when you wrap this, you want to make sure your tag goes through every time. Uh, do eight times. And then pull your tag in. Now when you tie this first one, you want to be sure to leave a lot out there because you're going to use all that tag in for tying on your second one. Let me see what that knot looks like so far. Just do a regular old snell knot. You're going to tie snell knot on this one too. Do the same thing you did before. So you're taking that tag in, you're tying it the same way. Uh huh. How close to that first hook do you want the second hook? It's going to be pretty close, and I'm going to show you how to get it there. Because that's the thing a lot of people ask me. They tie these things to figure out how to do it. But they uh, wind up the hook you know, far apart like this or something. Mm -hmm. And bring it in like this. And then you, what you want to do is you want to turn your first hook around. So it's upside down like this. You want to bring it in so you're just inside of your hook. are laying back to back too. Yep. That way, you know, it's going to get a fish top and bottom. That's the way we had your fish earlier. Top and bottom. One was in the top, one was in the bottom. Had his mouth pinned shut. He wasn't getting away. Now, why do you want two hooks? Uh, I just like two hooks because they work better than one. A lot of the bigger fish, if you just get one hook in them, they'll tear out. So, so with, kind of insurance. Uh huh. I want this leader to be 20 inches long. So I'll put five beads on here, alternating the yellow and the orange. And, and why use beads? Are they mimicking something that's... Uh, it's just an attractant, you know, like the colors of the lure, but it's, what it's really doing is it's pushing the hooks back further. You'll see that when we get it on there. Oh, okay. So I take the rubber band off and I also put my rubber band on here. So when you get a big fish and it pulls the rubber band off, you won't lose it or it gets in your net. Oh, fish on. Oh. Alright guys, so we had to interrupt that demo because we have a fish on. We got a fish. <laughs> we'll get back to Rob's demo here in a second. He's still okay. there? Okay, I'm gonna have to go for the net. Feel like a good one? Yeah. Oh, holy. He's a pull it. Whoa, Whoa. A good one. Ooh. Listen to that real screaming. <laughs> That's a good one. No bass master classic him. <laughs> Take me for a ride. We're at 20. You see it? Oh. Oh. Hey. 
it around the other rod. Took it all the way over. <laughs> oh shoot! <laughs> Up. There he is, guys. Alright. Don't have my glasses on. Oh, okay. oh, oh. Hold up. No, no, oh, no, 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 no. Oh, oh shit. <gasps> oh, he's under the boat. Oh, hang on. <laughs> hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Holy crap. Oh, my God. I wish you guys could see where this fish is. Oh. Here. Come on, come on, come on. <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> I really hope that that ended up on camera. I honestly thought I lost that one. Uh, broke the line. Oh well, it wrapped around god. that cable and the cable cut it. I knew that was going to happen. Oh. It was just a matter of getting the fish in the net first. Alright, let's uh, I'm all twisted here, so. Holy crap, you guys. I definitely thought that was a goner when that line snapped. But, um, you know, Rob was right there with the net. He figured stuff out, so. <sighs> Heart pounding stuff here. Let's take a look at this fish. Are you the little rascal that bit me earlier really this morning? Looking your little side eye. Ooh, that was a fun one. Yep. God. That's All right, Brock, did I do everything I was supposed to do in that you situation? Did. <laughs> Thank God. Thank God. <laughs> Guys, so back to Rob's demo before we were so pleasantly interrupted. Okay, Rob, where did we leave off? <laughs> I just put the uh, rubber band on the leader. And I was about ready to thread the lure here when we got that fish on. This rubber band. Now your rubber band, see, it's underneath there. So if it gets pulled off, you know, by the fish or by the net or whatever, you won't lose it. You won't have to find a new rubber band. Oh, okay. Had a guy hire me for um, showing a little bit about fishing these cut plugs up here. And I showed him that. And he goes, man, that's worth the whole price of the trip right there. <laughs> Now I cut this at about 24, which happens, just happens to be pretty close. And that extra four inches will um, be the, my waist for tying this knot. I tie a palomar knot on here. If you don't know the palomar knot, just go through it, hit it out once. Do an overhand knot and then put this loop over top of everything. Now when you're tying your knots, you always want to wet mono line. Since you got tight, it'll burn it. You know? burn it, yep. That should come out pretty darn close to a 20 inch leader. Okay. And now we got to uh, put some tuna in it. So this is the tuna with the... Uh, with the scent in it. Okay. And that's just plain canned tuna, guys. It's tuna oil, though, Back right? Packed oil, yeah. Okay. Not the water, not and the packed water. you put the rubber band on like that. And you're ready to rock right there. All right, guys. That's <gasps> I'm actually going to leave that in. Look at this guy. Guys, that's a wrap for today's salmon video. Rob's going to be doing these trips here on Lake Oroville probably through August, you said? August, yeah. August. So make sure that you call him and book your trip because he tends to, you know, fill up his schedule right away. I'll make sure that I link all of his information in the description box below. As you saw today, we caught two beautiful king salmon. I'm going to try not to think about the one that I lost because we did get two really nice fish today. So again, the Brad's cut plugs with that stinky tuna seems to be uh, the, the magic deal. lure. Yeah, the real deal here on Oroville. Stay tuned, we'll be back here and uh, we'll be fishing some other stuff too, right? Yep. Where do you think we're going next probably, if I can find a weekend Oh, uh, Maybe uh, Buller's Bar for okay. some summertime kokanee. Okay. And maybe uh, Berryessa for some trout. Awesome. Make sure that you hit that subscribe button, like this video, and who knows, maybe the next time I'm back out with Captain Rob, I'll see you outside. <laughs>